Hello everyone. If this is part four, which if you're seeing this, it is. You are so patient. <laughs> Thank you for coming here on part four. Again, I'm so sorry I had to break this video up, but it was three lifetimes long and nobody would have watched it all in one go. Uh, so without further ado, let's just get into the video and I hope this is- Hello, I- oh, hello. I am coming to you with my shades on. I'm sorry, this is so ridiculous, but here we are. I was on my bike uh, because I am so over this embroidery project and the thread's running out again and I realized I missed a flower, so I need more light blue thread as an excuse to also fix up the other flowers on that side that came out horrendous. But, um, <sighs> look at this, look at this. I'm tirelessly working at it. Who, who am I kidding, I'm very tired. Uh, these are the top leaves and flowers. They're a bit asymmetrical, but I can't be bothered. And these are the bottoms. Symmetrical enough from a distance, we're not complaining. Um, where did I miss the flower? Uh, the, here. I don't know if you can really see it. I don't know if you can see the carbon paper tracing. I missed a flower. And so I can go back and fix up the ones on the bottom, like th this one, that are horrendous. So I'm happy I can do that. But, um, I just want to tell you a funny little story about how, um, I, my phone died, uh, as soon as I entered the fabric shop. As soon as I enter the fabric shop on my language um, as soon as I got into the fabric shop um, my phone died and that is where I have the numbers of the threads that I need to buy written on like the, the number for the color and it died as soon as I opened it to look at the color it died so I had to go back home but I had like I had just gone from the, gotten there from the grocery store and I had a white chocolate and hazelnut chocolate bar in my um, not bar like square in my bag in my purse so the only logical response to this stressful situation was to eat my chocolate bar while going on the bike one-handed. Nothing happened. Don't, don't, don't do this. Do as I say, not as I do. Don't bike and eat. But I flatter myself, as Mr. Collins would say, that I would have been quite a sight to behold. Just imagine it. A girl on her bike riding pretty fast and um, one-handedly eating white chocolate and hazelnuts, which most of you will think I'm a weirdo because I'm a white chocolate person. Dogs. Could this day get any worse? Um, sorry about the dogs. It's like th these neighbors just moved in. I hope not permanently. I think they're just renting, thank God. And um, they are so noisy. Not only their dogs, but then they were playing trap music so loud today when I was just trying to do my work. And like trying to focus, I had to close the window and it's so hot here. Anyway, I'm going on 7,000 tangents. So yeah, um, now I'm just waiting for my phone to charge. So I thought to tell you this, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully it's charged. Hello everyone. So I thought I might inform you of what happened yesterday of the hassle I had to go through to get those embroidery threads after the last clip because, whew, so. So I go to the shop again with my phone at 7% because I couldn't wait. Uh, it was going to close soon and I go there by bike because I, I bike everywhere during the summer. Um, and so I go there and I buy my two embroidery threads from this gentleman. He's always very, very nice. And so I say thank you so much. Have a great evening. Bye, you know. And um, many story time for you. My dear beloved brother-in-law um, likes to prank me he loves to prank me so one time I had locked my bike so I don't know if you guys like have them where you live but at least here they're very popular those bike parking like things and basically the the front of the bike wheel goes into the little shape railing there and the back is free I usually used to lock the back because um, not that there's a bike stealing problem around here, but a lot of bikes have been stolen. And so everyone's like, no, we, we, want, we don't want our bikes stolen. Thank you very much. So I used to lock it in the back with a little, you know, bike lock. And um, long story short, I went to that bike parking lot and my sister and I were walking with um, her youngest daughter. 
like we were trailing behind and my brother-in-law and his and my sister's eldest daughter were in front. Now they both like to prank me really hard. So I got there and I didn't see my bike anymore. And I just freaked out. I was like, I can't find my bike anymore. Help, where's my bike, where's my bike? Someone stole it, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I see them chuckle. I see them like laugh and I'm like, oh, you did this, didn't you? They hit it behind, I, I don't remember where. So the life lesson learned from my brother-in-law that day was to always lock your bike to wherever you're parking it because then they can carry it away. So that traumatized me. So needless to say, I have been following that advice. So all this to say, when I pulled pulled into like the kind of, it's an entry entrance way, it's a porch of the, of the fabric shop, there is a metal column with like a post thing attached to it. It's basically a metal column, metal pole, basically right next pole, metal pole right next to the wall. And so I locked the front wheel of my bike to that metal pole, got in, did what I needed to do. I locked it with the, the, the key because I have a lock and key. I don't have a combination lock. Well, I used to have a lock and key. You probably can guess where this is going. Get out, um, uh, put my bag in my bike basket and pull my uh, key out and uh, I was downloading, yes, I'm downloading edit in software on my computer. And um, I pulled the key out and I, I, I kneeled down to go and unlock my bike. It doesn't unlock, the lock is broken. Like completely, like I say in Italian, Andato completamente allo scatafascio, like it's turning emptily. You turn the key and you feel it turning, but it's turning nothingness. Like it, it's destroyed. So I, I try a couple of other times because I'm like, is this a fever dream? And then, you know, I call my family and I'm like, help, what do I do? And they're like, okay, call the fabric shop guy and ask him to help you. Now he's a very nice gentleman. So he began to try and help me. And we quickly realized that the, the the lock was broken. Like there was nothing you could do for the lock. What does a, now what does a normal person do? Call an expert. What does me and like probably 0.5 people in the world, including my characters, call dad. So I called my dad. I'm like, dad, it's broken. It, it is broken. The lock is broken. He's like, do you need spare keys? I'm like, no, 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 no. The lock is broke. I need you to come here and break the lock. So he's like, okay, I'm coming to break the lock, you know? And meanwhile, we're still trying, me and the gentleman, and um, completely by chance, this guy wasn't called. The cousin of the fabric shop gentleman arrives and he's like, what's happening here? And I'm like, well, my, my bike lock broke and you know, blah, 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 blah. He tried to help, we put oil in the, in the, in the lock like in the, before we put the key in, cause we wanted to see if it was stuck, but we all knew that it wasn't. We just gave it one last try, you know? After that, I, I just go, yeah, you know, my father's coming, hopefully, you know, he's gonna help out. He's gonna have something to like, saw it. And this guy just looks at me and goes, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get my electric saw. I kid you not, he and my father show up at the same exact time, this man, with like a power tool box, ginormous, almost looks like something you would see in a horror movie. And my dad with something resembling a nail file. <laughs> wasn't a nail file, I'm sure I'm butchering it. Sorry, dad, he watches my video. Sorry, dad, I'm sure it wasn't a nail file. Um, but uh, it was, you know those like utility knives that you use to carve out things? It was very similar to that. So my, my, my dad just shows up with this thing and this guy's like, to his cousin, do you have gloves? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I was like, okay. Just standing there as my dad, the fabric store gentleman and his cousin <laughs> are breaking my lock open with this ginormous power tool that looks like something that could easily kill a human. And I was just shocked. All of that for two little spools of embroidery thread. So yeah, this is my adventurous life. Uh, see, like, it sounds so crazy that the cousin showed up just right on time that nobody would believe me. I swear, this sounds like out of a stupid movie. Like, 
the cousin just conveniently arrives and conveniently just so happens to have like a storage unit or something nearby. I don't know where he got it from, honestly. I don't know where that came from. Um, where a storage unit or a store or a house nearby where he has a literal enormous powerful power tool and my dad and I were just standing there like wow and I go dad he he beat you again not hating on dad who was trying to help but like honestly we would have been there pretty much till September so yeah that was it that was my little story time um yeah so I'm not blaming this on the bike walk as normal people would. I'm blaming it on my brother-in-law because he traumatized me because I can't... Oh, I guess I didn't explain the connector between the brother-in-law story and this story is that I cannot lock my bike. I cannot not lock my bike to a firm point anymore. Well, even if I hadn't locked it to a like pole or something, it would have, the lock would have jammed, but it would have been easier because even though I live kind of far from the fabric shop, I could have shimmied it in some way so that I could carry the bike, not go on the bike, but carry the bike and maybe my dad could have met me halfway. I could have gone to a, like a cyclist or something. No, I couldn't move because it was tied to a pole. <laughs> that was fun. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun. It was definitely a very comical situation. It was stressing at the beginning because I had very low battery on my phone. Uh, I didn't know where my father was. I didn't know what he was gonna do because I asked him, can you please get something to break it? And he's like, I'm gonna bring you spare keys because he gave me that lock. And I'm like, no, we don't need spare keys. The lock is broken, but it's broken. Like, and, and so it, it was just chaos, but isn't my entire life chaos? Uh, I'm doing the stem, by the way. This little faint line that nobody except for me is ever gonna see or care about. Yay. She has triumphed at least for half. After two weeks of work, the first half of the design is done. I, I, can you see the leaves? I can't even have the satisfaction to cut it out because the embroidery frame wouldn't fit. So now, enough of the talking. Let's get to embroidering the other side of this because I am so sick of this. And the fact that I will have to get one of my best friends. Hi, hi you wretched creature. If you're watching, you know who you are. The fact that I have to make her, the fact that I'm making her, a pillow with embroidery on it? Mental. I, I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. So if you're watching this, you're part of my mental breakdown, but I love you. Okay, let's keep going. Matt Margie coming at you here. I did a lot of work on this and I just remembered I said this was gonna be a tutorial. So here's the deal. So I'm gonna give you all the steps that I did so far so that this is as clear as possible for people who want to make this at home. So after you've spent like however much time you have spent on the embroidery, hopefully not as much as me, you are going to um, correctly fit the jacket to you. You're gonna, what I did is I folded in the sides and adjusted and pinned where they needed to fold to look right, to sit right with the dress. And you're going to place snaps to make the jacket close. Um, my jacket didn't close all the way like hers. The two ends of the jacket are just straight closing and like they just lay like that without closures and they peacefully and harmoniously curve down. Mine didn't do that so I added snaps. So if you need that, add snaps. Um, so this is what I did. Maybe you need to visualize it to understand better what I did. So. First you fit it, hello, and then, see, I put, this is what the jacket looks like. This is like straight, and then this goes like this, and there are three snaps here, so that then it closes. And then you stitch the embroidered panels on, and then you sort out the collar bit. But before sorting out the collar bit, another bit that you need to sort out is the undergown which I adjusted the straps, but this is probably part of your process if you did them correctly in the first place. But I added three snaps here, one, two, three, so that, um, you know, the jacket would lay well, and I did the, I did the 
scrunching, do scrunching here, and also do something else. Oh, for the, hold on, where's my underdress? I'm not gonna remove it from the suitcase because I'm lazy. I'm packing, I'm leaving tomorrow because, hi self, um, because, you know, we're, I'm moving from this house to like the more winter townhouse because um, summer's over. Can you tell that this video was like pre-recorded a billion months ago? Um, and I'm lazy, so I'm not gonna take it out, but what I had to do is, um, I feel like everyone has those like people in their life who are just super helpful at their sewing. And even when you don't wanna hear it, they're gonna give you the feedback that you need. And my mother came and helped me yesterday and she was like, Margie, your underskirt's too, like, it's too big. Like the hem circumference is bigger than the overskirt. And I was like, now what are you talking about? And then I realized it folds really ugly. And so I was like, huh, I kinda need to fix that. So I did, I did like do a triangle slit, in a, not slit, I don't know. I did sew a triangle basically in there. Now I need to sort something out because I might not have sewed the embroidery panels on the jacket correctly. So pray for me as I sort that out. But all I have left, oh my gosh. I'm almost done here because I only have the collar left and then the little sleeve thingies and then the little else. Then I'm done. Oh my god. <laughs> I couldn't wait to be done with this project because I have actual wardrobe projects that I need to work. Okay, um, I'm gonna log off for tonight and just get in the zone. I think what I might be able to do tonight are just sort out the collar bit and then um, to this week, cause day Sunday, today, tomorrow is Sunday, technically in two hours, an hour is Sunday, which is my birthday. Um, and so no sewing tomorrow, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe some sewing tomorrow. I am a nerd, um, but hopefully I will have this finished by like Wednesday. I don't know. Pray for me. I'm um, gonna go work. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of I am sweating my butt off in this stupid polyester ensemble. So this is what where we're at so far. I had my amazing mother try and help me put. Yes, I'm. I'm in a kid's room. Okay, just do. I, I had my amazing mother try and help me put pins here, but it didn't last, so I'm gonna have to make do. Uh, however, I this part of it, you can't really see it because it's dark velvet. Better, actually, like that. This thing, this jacket, rose jacket, might actually take the cake for the absolute messiest thing I have ever sewed. It is for real. The, the, the camera like interrupted the recording. Uh, why am I not in my room, you may ask? Because it has bed bugs. Not bed bugs, wood worms. The little bugs that go in a wood make holes and they're really tiny. And it, one just bit me again. And I had the suspicion that they bit me in my sleep the other night um, because I found some uh, really itchy places in like my legs. And I kept itching them and, and I was like, this is not a mosquito bite. This is definitely not a mosquito bite. But however, I'm really happy with how this is laying right now. These look awesome. And um, so I currently transferred all of my rose work to that. I only need uh, the belt, which I will go fetch. Um, and the tassels are at my other house, but like, I'm not worrying about the tassels tonight. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm not gonna record any more sewing footage because at this point I feel like this video is 3000 hours long. I'm just gonna crack on with this and like take it off as carefully as I can as try not to upset this monstrosity creation that is this part of the jacket, oh my goodness. When you look at it up close, it's horrible. Yes, the mirror is old and filthy. No, you just can't see it. You can't see it, which is fantastic actually. Don't, don't look at my mistakes. Just don't look at them. It hit me, I completely forgot uh, the sash. So because I'm a procrastinator, I'm not gonna sort out the collar bit. What am I procrastinating, you may ask? Putting it on. I don't wanna pull out the combination. 
combinations and the petticoat and the corset and the ugh, I don't want to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to make the sash for tonight, which should take me a while, so I'll get rid of the sash tonight. So what you want to do for the sash, just really quickly, I'll run it down. You want to get your waist measurement with the velvet coat on. So for me, it would be like, I think I'm safe doing 31 inches. I can always cut it down. Mm. Do you ever get itchy on the outside of your mouth? Mm. Uh, so 31 inches uh, and you double the width that you want. So for me, it's like four inches. I don't know, I'm, I'm basically winging it now, but I'll measure it for you. Um, and I'll put it here, how wide it was. I'll measure it for you. Uh, so you do that, you sew it, or you sew it from, because you're using a satin, I assume, you sew it shiny sides to get shiny sides facing each other, and you sew it, and then you turn and into a tube. And then you leave the two ends open, you turn it inside out, and then you just you just put hooks and eyes in there. I don't know. I'm sleep deprived. So these are my calculation for a sort of movie accurate sash because I'm not doing a plain sash, but I'm not doing a fully pleated sash either because her sash has like a little scrunchy bit. So I thought I could gather the back ends. You don't know how that will work or lead them just slightly um, I'll show you what I mean later but if you have a 28 inch waist I would recommend doing 30 inches just for the overlap of the hooks and eyes or whatever method you're using 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 for closure and um, it's uh, uh, 10 inches uh, uh, 10 inches and 30 inches rectangle so you're gonna what I meant by shiny sides together. See, this is the matte side. And underneath is shiny sides. You sew them together like this tube, loop it out, and then I'll show you the next steps. I need to be responsible and go to sleep now, but this is my progress thus far. So, sewing the tube by hand it took a while, but then I started to sew on the hooks and eyes. So, the next thing I'm gonna wanna do after sew the tube, flip it inside out, hem these edges here, and then you know, make this pleat that you're gonna pin all over the sash like this. And this is gonna stay like this for a while. I'm gonna iron it so that hopefully it's a looser pleat and it kind of mimics what she has in the movie. It doesn't have to be perfectly precise because it's not supposed to be. So yeah, I'm gonna go to sleep now because it's like three minutes till midnight. <laughs> So, let us discuss expenses. Now, for the satin, I spent 25 years. It was 10 years a meter, and I bought 2.5 meters of it. I did have some leftover, but um, I would say it was a good amount of leftover. Like, I, I shouldn't have gotten, I think, two meters. It would have been too little. Then for the velvet, I got two meters of it, and it was 28 euros. So for the fabric, it was a total of 62 euros. Um, of course, all my fabrics were synthetic because there was no way in heck I could afford a cotton fiber or a silk fiber for those. Then for the embroidery floss, I got two different brands uh, because I was not in the same place when I needed them more. So for the first brand, it was 1.80 euros uh, times five which was nine euros and then the second brand i had to get two uh, little thingies of embroidery floss which were 170 each so that totaled 3.40 uh, euros so for the embroidery floss it is a total of 12 euros and 40 cents then for you know haberdashery and stuff the lace cost me four euros and 75 for I believe half a meter of it, yes, half a meter of it, because it was extremely thick and elaborate. By thick, I mean wide. It was extremely wide and elaborate, so that's why it cost me this much, and I only had to get half a meter of it. Then, um, for the ribbon, I only spent 50 cents, and uh, that totaled to 5 euros and 25 cents. So, my total was uh, 79.6 uh, 
65 euros. Now, I have forgotten the price of the snaps, but that would have been, I think, around a euro, so it would have been 80.65 uh, euros. And please keep in mind that I already had books and eyes in my stash, I already had sewing thread in my stash, machine needles in my stash. Um, I already had a corset, combinations, I already had. Um, I already had so many things, including the whole underlay bodice fabrics, like my cotton sateen and um, lining, they were from my stash. So obviously, and my petticoat, um, the white part of my petticoat was an old bed sheet, uh, which I made into a petticoat, which then I remade into this petticoat. So I would say, for a lot of these things, you can definitely, definitely, definitely recycle materials. Um, and just one last caveat, if you want to do this but you're on a time crunch and you don't feel like doing embroidery, fabric paint. You can draw up a pattern, like take reference for mine, feel free to do that, and draw up a pattern with um, fabric marker or fabric paint. That's very real, I wouldn't have done that even if that idea came to me earlier because I am a masochist. <laughs> so yeah, that's the price. As you can see, it's a bit steep for just a Halloween costume, but uh, this will not just be a Halloween costume for me. I will definitely use this as a fancy dress as well, and dogs are barking. So. With that, I leap into outro marking. End of part four, and therefore the end of the series. Thank you so much for coming along. I hope this was useful to you and that some of you are actually going to make a rose costume now. I wanted to make this very complicated costume more accessible because, you know, that's how I started my channel. I didn't see tutorials that were very detailed on things that I wanted to make, so I thought, you know, why not make some? So I really hope this was of use to some of you and um, thank you so much for coming along. If you want to stick around, I would love to have you. and. I will see you in my next shenanigan. Bye!